The giant willow aphid has become a widespread problem throughout New Zealand since its arrival here in 2013. It causes damage through feeding, inflicting wounds to willow trees. In addition to weakening trees, the feeding aphids produce a substance called honeydew, which attracts wasps and creates further problems for the bee industry. Back in December 2013, we became aware of a new aphid that was giving our willows trees a bit of grief. We'd never seen it in the country before. So it was very early days, a bit over two years ago now, and, and subsequently it has exploded, uh, uh, spread throughout New Zealand within 12 months. Uh, very large populations uh, on, on, on willows from, from one end of the country to the other. So uh, it, it was a, a biosecurity breach. We, uh, we've subsequently found these aphids in other parts of the world. We simply don't know what part or how it got here, but it's a problem. There are literally millions of willow trees are planted throughout New Zealand, many of them for Pacific purposes, particularly along our river berms and our banks for stability and keeping rivers flowing on course where they need to. We have, again, millions of them planted on our hillsides for slope stability, shade, shelter, for stock. We have a significant requirement for more willows to be planted. This aphid that's turned up uh, uninvited is, is, is presenting difficulties because it's now uh, hampering the, the, uh, the growth of these trees. It's um, damaging the stems in, in the trunk, which is releasing sap, which we call honeydew, which is attracting uh, very large populations of wasps. So we now simply have willow trees <coughs> effectively turning into wasp nests. So, so it's, a, it's a serious issue. Where I farm here in Northern Hawke's Bay, I simply turn off my, my quad bike uh, metres and metres away from these trees and I'll know by the, the loud hum, uh, I can quickly tell how many, the, well, A, if the aphids are, are alive and well and, and B, how many there are. But, but, but effectively now, and this obviously didn't used to be the problem prior to the, the, this biosecurity breach in 2013, but I simply can't go anywhere near and do any maintenance work around my willows for two, three, four months every year. Uh, otherwise I'd just get chased off by, uh, by swarms of wasps. We're still learning, and I guess at the moment we're not seeing evidence of trees being killed. I certainly see with some of my trees, they wilt significantly, particularly if they're under stress from drought or dry periods. So the leaves sort of hang down. These, these things are, um, I, I can scrape my hand down the trunk and get two handfuls full of them uh, on, on, on every single tree that I have on the property. So they're, they're there in enormous numbers. I've never seen uh, any insect pest uh, on any of, my, I guess, the operations uh, around the farming business I run that, that are as numerous as these. So, um, yeah, just their numbers. And, and, but, but where we are here with this nursery, they're having to spray throughout the nurseries uh, where we grow these poles in New Zealand because young trees obviously are more vulnerable. They've got various sort of spikes on their back and bits and pieces. Not all of them have got wings, only, only a few of them have wings, so they sort of travel, but they have, again, the science which we're trying to learn about. But what I'm led to believe at this stage, to be proven by science, is that these things, there's no female or male in the species. They all reproduce, and they reproduce about 10 young uh, per per aphid per day. So it's an absolutely e exponential explosion in numbers, and that's what sort of, I guess, got us concerned. We know the only natural predator is ladybird. Uh, anecdotally, I'm seeing ladybird populations increase, but uh, again, anecdotally, the, uh, these, these, uh, these giant willow aphids are there in such numbers that the, the, the ladybirds, I don't think, are having much noticeable impact at all. So we're starting to do some work about, um, we are finding, and, and we're continuing to work on whether some willow varieties are more tolerant than others, and that, that will be an important part of our science. Another important part that we want to look at is, is, is and we're looking all around the world on this one, is there some known uh, biological control predators on, on, that we can bring in that, that target specifically these aphids, because it, it's simply not economic for hill country farmers like me to spray 20, 30, 40, 50 year old willow trees. It just doesn't make sense, so we, we've got to find another way. We have got an application in with the Sustainable Farming Fund through MPI. We're confident because it is of such a significant uh, issue, this one, that it will be successful, but we're yet to have that uh, fully ticked off. A couple of years ago we first noticed it here. We actually, it was a really hot day and we went for a swim down on the river and there were some rocks underneath these willow trees and you couldn't walk on them, they were sticky. So we have a look around and oh, there's these giant willow aphids. So looked up on the net and oh yeah, people are seeing these things and then next thing they see the bees are collecting it and it's a, a bit of a menace. It, it gives the bees some feed but it sets like concrete in the combs and it's 
not a particularly good winter feed. It, um, yeah, it's, and we're really worried about how much effect it's going to have on the willows in the spring because it's the willows our main source of nectar and pollen in the spring. It's just vital for the bees. The byproduct of the aphids feeding on the willows is a sticky sap which the bees collect, and it's called honeydew. You get it off beech trees in the South Island. It's actually, in some areas, it's quite a sought after honey, different honeydews. We even get blackberry honeydew off passion vine hoppers occasionally, so it's not that unusual, but this one is unusual in that it sets like concrete. It granulates very quickly. Wasps are one of our biggest problems around. Actually, just around here, they can be very bad. Just over the back there, last year I got four nests. Farm just down the road, I got 27 nests, all within 200 metres of the hives. The wasp numbers are just starting to build up this time of year, and the honeydew gives them extra feed. It just supercharges them. And then come late April, early May, when the willow aphids disappear, or the, you get a lot of rain, it washes all the honeydew away. You've got 50 million wasps, and they're all looking for something to eat, and they'll take to the hives, and they can kill the hives dead. You know, wasps are, cost New Zealand beekeepers millions and millions and millions of dollars a year, and they don't help the farmers either. Um, they're really unpleasant, doesn't matter what you're doing, if you're out duck shooting or something, you stick your foot in a blimmin' wasp nest, it gets really nasty. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.